<coughs> you were only 22 years old, Edward. Yes, 22 years old only. We have both been trained in different and successive training camps in England. Exercise after exercise, day by night, by day by night, in all weather conditions, and under the fire, fire of blank bullets. Edward, you became a well-trained soldier and an excellent combat medic, knowing all the secrets of the machine gun as well as its shots of morphine and tourniquets. <clears throat> During the spring of 1944, our unit... I will just interrupt uh, shortly your speech because we have the flyover. In 1940, the whole family is living in Patterson, New Jersey. <clears throat> at the time, you are 17 years old and are working at a restaurant help as a restaurant helper, contributing to the family income and welfare. <clears throat> but second, the Second World War is coming, and as many other young men of our generation. You decide to enlist in the U.S. Army in order to defend your, defend your values, your adopted country, and to liberate Europe from tyranny and Nazism. Having Polish roots, you perfectly need to know what it means since Warsaw's Ghetto has been created. You list, enlisted in, on April 27. 1943 in New Jersey. In the Army, we were both well trained and educated to be vigilant soldiers. But beside this, your generation, generous nature to push you to ask for an additional combat medic training program. Our mission as medics was to relieve the pains of our bodies. On early morning of June the 6th, we are facing the Normandy beaches on a flat and large sandy beach surrounded by Germans, heavily armed positions, much more dangerous than <coughs> cliffs. How, how vulnerable were we on that day? And on the open, flat and open beaches, a welcome committee is <coughs> waiting for us with murdering machine gun, 42 machine gun bullets. We know <coughs> that we had to reach the meeting point at the upper level of the beach under an enormous and terrifying fire, a nightmare, an incredible nightmare. Fire was coming from German machine gun nests, bullets, grenades, shells, mortars, all falling around us, showing, <coughs> showing death everywhere. We were all in a state of uh, consideration. Uh, so many were killed, we lost all of, of our officers within the first hour. The situation was absolutely chaotic. <clears throat> we treated so many wounded. <clears throat> then at 11 o'clock, I found you at one of the top, at the top of the beach and recognized you despite your terrible stomach wound. You were, and I understand, understood the situation and I gave you a shot of morphine to relieve your pain. We greeted each other, and I stayed with you until you take, took your last breath. For your courage and your bravery, you will, ord uh, will be ordered the Silver Star. I never forgot you, Eddie. I came back many times to honor you, such as today, 75 years later. Edward, you did the ultimate sacrifice, giving your life like 10,000 other valiant soldiers 
on the 6th of June, 1944. Normandy has been liberated. The world has been liberated thanks to your sacrifice. We will never forget you and your generation will continue to visit and remember you forever. <clears throat> You've got the silver star and the purple heart for your military service, but the most important medal is the one of our heart and our spirit. Rest in peace, Edward. May God bless you. Your generation is there. We will never forget you. And no mission is too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first, the motto of the 1st Infantry Division. Thank you very much.